can't don't be take it. our dogs don't take them you can't don't have tax them. our meat not that either over my dead body i actually um that was quite sore i um i burst a blood vessel in my thumb at the weekend oh <laughs> applauding really <laughs> yeah i was what, at oh right yeah, okay. i was banging the table going, it wasn't when you were uh, Rory Stewart and Alistair Campbell live. No. <laughs> <laughs> that is fuck wow. That is a fucking body. <laughs> Should I just excuse myself from the podcast record? <laughs> fucking hell. Ow. <laughs> they were being too sensible. <laughs> Very bravo, sir. Oh. Bravo. Very good. I just never thought they'd be able to, to agree. <laughs> <laughs> shots fired by the golden boy hello I think it's not the first time we've <laughs> taken shots in the racist <laughs> politics to be fair yeah. hello everybody how are you I'm good thank you how are you good other than the previously mentioned blood burst blood vessel thumb yeah how are you yeah it's okay just I think it was fine until I started to bang it into my other hand just then and <laughs> it reminded me that it's injured so here we are <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ava Santina Capital J journalist hello hi how are you thanks for having me <laughs> Thanks for coming to work. Uh, <laughs> how has your day been? Yeah, good, thank you. What have you been up to? Uh, is this another one of those things where we have to list what we've done today and then I'm like, oh, crap, Why nothing. Why don't you talk about your appearance on Politics Live? I could just do this for you. I could, yeah, but I'll that's nice. myself. I'll I wouldn't, wouldn't want to say that, would I? I wouldn't be like, oh, yeah, you know. No, but that's why I set you up with the question. Oh, right. Okay. Oh, I went on Politics Live. It was, it was great, yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah. Very good. Talked about... Um, Trade unions, strikes, mm. um, HS2, mm. all the big ones. What's the vibe of the Politics Life panel about HS2? Well, Damien Green was there. Mm. And of course, Damien Green was um, infamously caught watching porn on his computer. Um, but he at is, work. Yeah, at work in, in Parliament. Um, but he is, uh, you know, on, on the panel. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to We still treat him as a credible man. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were trying to extrapolate, like, that into his opinion about HS2. I was like, I'm going to see, you. can't wait to see how this goes. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have a lot to say about HS2, actually, because I think the whole government at the moment is sort of focus grouping the country. They sort of drip fed that through the Sunday papers and said, oh, um, we might cancel it. Now they're waiting to see mm -hmm. how everyone feels about it. I just cannot believe, and I know we haven't, we haven't got this down as a talking point, but let's do it anyway. I ca just the fucking, the acceptance in this country of just settling for mediocrity and mm -hmm. just accepting decline and, and being like, oh, you know what? Um, yeah, okay, we have farmed out all of the capacity of the state to consultants and we're no longer capable of delivering anything. We can't build fucking 300 miles of high-speed rail. But honestly, what the fuck is wrong with us? Yeah. What what is the problem? Why is it like oh no, we actually we can't build a high speed rail line from Birmingham to Manchester? It just it winds me up so much. And the fact that people are ex just so accepting to be like yeah, it's too expensive. It's just silly. It's absolutely no and impossible. Well, it is expensive. It's and it is too expensive. But it's like well, fucking can we, we? We used to be a country. You know what's funny is that at the beginning when they first um, were promoing the idea of HS2, they used to have like big promos in Euston Station. You mm -hmm. used to be able to go and get an HS2 pen, mm. or there'd be like people How many there. Do you have? One, one here right now. <laughs> uh, no. um, but there'd be like people in there being like, "Can I talk to you about this new high-speed rail we're trying to build?" Um, and no, there's not. And there isn't also going to be about 500 meters of tunnel between Euston and Kings Cross that would connect HS2 with HS1. But isn't Again, that because they'd pathetic. have to excavate a whole load of other bodies? They moved loads of bodies from Euston. Do you know this? No, loads tell me. of graves. Like it's like it's not quite a plague pit. I, pit. I think it's from the Second World War, but I'm sure some other traffic really? nonce will come and correct me about that. Mm. But um, one of the community. One of the community. One of the brothers. <laughs> one of the boys. <laughs> Alan, let me know. <laughs> um, they excavated like hundreds and hundreds, exhumed them and put them out in Surrey. Mm. Um, and then I think the next tunnel, they'd have to do it again. And they were like, guys, it was a lot the first were time. Were people killed in bombs, or were they buried? there the bodies well I don't think they were buried alive if that's what you mean no no as in like the graves the graves Ray Raves yeah graves in King's Cross well yeah but you've got to think I mean even 50 years ago there wasn't really much going on there no true true did you know that in the depths of um, pandemic planning when mm -hmm. when we were all like actually fully locked down first lockdown didn't know what to do part of the government's pandemic um preparedness plan was that if deaths became too high that they would turn Hyde Park into a massive crematorium <laughs> yikes 
I love that they looked at all the parks and they went, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> that's There's the enough pit. space. <laughs> You're the nicest one. Yeah. <laughs> we should use that. When I was um, coming back from the aforementioned wedding, I, um, I was talking to a dear friend of mine, a uh, friend of the podcast, Josh Kaplan, who is also a train nonce. And he, which, <laughs> <laughs> he's never come on the podcast, but we've just outed him and just body, bodying him. <laughs> he's one of you. Um, and he was telling me about a YouTuber who has doing, done a series where he's visited the least visited train stations in the country. Oh, yeah, it's Jeff, yeah. <laughs> it, yeah, it is Jeff. Um, Jeff has quite a big YouTube channel, like half a million subs. Marshall. And by going to the train stations and documenting them, his fans then going and visiting the train stations after the fact is skewing the data. Oh, um, no. Which means they are no longer the least visited train stations in the country. Where, you know, if you were looking at the list of where's the least traffic, where can we close these stations, he goes and does a video at one of them and, like, foot traffic increases 500%. And so they can no longer be closed down. It's quite interesting. But that's actually quite a good content model for Jeff mm. because it becomes. He can just go to the, the new the least visited one. The list refreshes itself. Yeah. So it just creates. I've, got, I've gone Smart. to the new Smart least guy. visited one. Yeah. Smart guy. Mm. Good man, Jeff. I'd love to get him on here. I think my niche with him, I keep meaning to ask him, but I'm too frightened in case he rejects me, is that, you know, he likes to do all of the secret entrances on the tube. Right. And I bet he hasn't done the secret ent entrance into Parliament. But I could take him on that. Yeah, you could. You could escort him, couldn't yeah. you? Yeah. But if cool. he said no, it would really upset me. Devastating. Yeah. Never meet your heroes. No. Rule number one. Yep. Yeah, he might be a massive diva. He might actually prefer the Superloop to the to the Elizabeth line. This is so such like train chat that's going <laughs> so over my head. And I'm, it Superloop is a bus. That was the joke. Right, okay, great joke. <laughs> <laughs> Ed! <laughs> what have you been up to, my man? Uh, no, look, thank God we're not talking about that train <laughs> shit anymore. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, listeners. <laughs> um, what have you been up to? I went to the XL Bully protest. You're goddamn right. You're goddamn right. I'd say... Hands off my dogs. Hands off my <laughs> fucking 62 kilo dog named Frank Sinatra for some reason. Um, yeah, so there's about... The king. The king. There's about... No, that's Elvis. Yeah, you said that. And then I was like, I just agreed. <laughs> yeah, of course. Natural. Yes, the king. Old Blue Eyes. What was he called? What, he had a nickname, didn't he? Old Blue Eyes, wasn't it? The Dame it? of New York. The Dame of New York. No. The king of New York. King of New York, sure. <laughs> Mr. Sinatra, sorry. Not quite Dean Martin. No. They did well to resurrect him and put his spirit in an XL bully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that was class. That's what they did. Um, there, was about, there was about can't train a dog. Do have shamanic powers. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. They, that's why they're so like. It's not like they actually want to keep them. It's just the dogs will. The, sh the shaman spirits will kill them. Yeah. If, 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 this if is the living bullies. embodiment of Frank Sinatra. How dare you suggest we cull him? Yeah, and I'm studying him out for yeah. X amount of money apart. Did you see a Diana? Because I'd have a Diana bully dog in here. Did I see a Diana? Yeah. And one named by Diana. A, a bully dog with Diana's spirit in it. So here's the, here's the actually interesting thing about the Exo Bully protest. There wasn't a single Exo Bully to be found there. There was thousands of owners. Thousands, excuse me. There was, I'd say, about a thousand max. Um, with empty leads and collars signifying what what will they'll be left with if the ban were to come in, in their opinion. Oh, okay. So it's a striking visual metaphor. They, they would they would argue. <laughs> <laughs> um, how big are the collars? Fucking huge. There was one. So Frank Sinatra, who we're talking about. So Frank Sinatra. Oh, did is you a meet Frank Sinatra's owner? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's what, so he's the guy who, if you've seen the clips that he's put out on social media or in the video that'll be out on the YouTube channel. He's the guy who's got the shaved head and he's holding this big white collar. I'd, it's like, it's actually like a pizza. Yeah. yeah it's huge. It's, it's like, it's gold like 12 inches across. Yeah. yeah. It's massive. The guy who says Elton John can wear this. Yes. Yes. So yeah. I kept my dog. Or yeah. Sam Smith. Or Sam Smith. Sam, Sam, Sam Smith wore more. Yeah. Which was quite fun. That was funny. I enjoyed that chat. Um, but what was my point? about that it kind of looked like Big a um, wrestler's, Huge collars. wrestler's belt you know when yeah they win the, the, when they win the medals but it is a little but little. clearly no, no dogs at the protest no dogs at the protest because there's two arguments for that either well if one if one ex one rogue XL bully goes nuts and for some reason <laughs> kills someone <laughs> Which, which it would <laughs> never do by the way <laughs> would never <Okay>. happen <laughs> I just I don't know I'm just out of the box thinking here <laughs> <laughs> what could possibly happen if thousands of XL bullies gathered <laughs> in parliament or 
maybe they cannot be trusted to be <coughs> in public with with the, probably the most stimulation you could ever get. Well, you had all that meat in your pockets. That's true, actually. I was covering <laughs> I, went, I went by the pictures. <laughs> Washed myself with a steak <laughs> and this I actually, morning. And I brought a three-year-old with me <laughs> as bait. It would be a... Um, it'd be a <laughs> It would be a pretty provocative way, you know, most traditionally when people talk about sort of like purging Westminster of Parliament, it's usually like <laughs> we will blow up the Houses of Parliament. Instead, we will set loose a pack of 1,000 XL bullies <laughs> through the halls of the parliamentary who estate. Who would win? The body politic of the United Kingdom? Or I think Rob is the only one who could defend himself. Even then. Can, no, Dar- Rob's Rob like his him. side. Rob goes with the bullies, doesn't he? Yeah, Just he like, leads the pack. Yeah. The, yeah. He, he becomes their leader. What's yeah. the Call of Duty game mode where like dogs attack you? Uh, they're it's in zombies. Like zombies. It's like, <laughs> it's that. You yeah. have to go round after round with increasing numbers of waves <laughs> of XL bullets. <laughs> that's going to nursery in this country now. <laughs> um, um, so, what did the owners have to say? So, there is quite their argument. The, the, the plank of their argument is these dogs aren't intrinsically aggressive. It, say, they say it's down to bad ownership. Mm. And they're making the point that if you have an XL bully, you should be a responsible owner. You should have it extremely well trained that you should be able to control their dog and that it's not fair to blame all dogs on the freak actions of various bullies and but like hashtag also, not all men hashtag not all men yeah. not all male bully dogs females as well but the converse of that is well the good owners like everyone no one in there would at the protest would face up to being a bad owner. Why would you do that? No, exactly. But as in, like the good, the good owners, the bad owners aren't part of the dialogue. If that makes sense. Mm. Oh, they're not there. Yeah, or if there's potentially bad owners at the thing who are like, no, I'm a good owner. But even if their dog is Savaging running wild, across. coming over here with their bad dog training skills. Yeah, that on, kind on of boats thing. for some reason. Yeah. Um, and so <laughs> the bully dogs are on boats. <laughs> <laughs> They've discovered amphibious warfare. Who trained them to do this? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> just the just genetic, the quadruple XL bully <laughs> is piloting <laughs> various inflatable boats across, across the channel <laughs> with various Afghan hounds. <laughs> Have you seen an Afghan hound? Uh, yes. Do you know what they look like? They look long-haired. Yeah, long, like long dogs. hair. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Lovely dogs. I've got a friend who's um, tall, skinny, and has long blonde hair, and we relish telling her that she looks like an Afghan hound. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm not thin enough to be an Afghan (laughs) hound, is what you're saying to me. Tell me more about the protest. Should we have some some sound clips? Yeah, let's. Um, I think there's a bigger issues going on in this country for them to just bring in a ban in like that. Um, you know, there's rapists and murderers and everything else roaming the streets um, and paedophiles and nothing's quickly done uh, about this. I feel strongly one because I own one and he is the best boy in terms of managed training and just behaviour around all sorts of people and environments that I've ever kind of experienced with the dog and he provides me safety that the government doesn't. They keep saying that they're trying to keep people safe and he is the only thing that allows me to walk the streets and not get disrespectful comments, not be followed and not have sort of, you know, especially if I'm running, goodness, I can run with him and I'm safe. If I go out and about by myself, I'm not safe. They don't keep me safe from men or the police. How big is he? He's 62 kilo. Yeah. That's, a big, that's a big dog. Mate, I've got a four-year-old child indoors, do you know what I mean? He's been... That's bigger than the, dog, the child, surely. Oh, he is, he is, probably by twice the size. Uh, but at the end of the day, mate, it's, you know, she's been raised around him, you know. She was two, I purchased Frank, you know, eight weeks old. And mate, he's, he's the best big brother that she could ever have, do you know what I mean, at the end of the day. I've had no issues, no issues whatsoever, no... Mate, it's just... It's just how you raise them at the end of the day, do you know what I mean? Like, you show them love, they'll give love, do you know what I mean? Like, all animals. This breed was created, OK, as a co-founder, Dave Wilson, by basically making them a companion breed. Um, and this, these dogs that are doing these attacks are not XL bullies. What, what are they then? They're crossbreeds. Um, in the ones that I've actually been able to stomach to watch, um, I couldn't, the last one, that really upset me. Which, which one was that? That was the one with the guy where people were standing around videoing and he was dying. Um, that to me is like, I don't understand that. Um, the other ones I'm talking about, the one that was in Birmingham, that dog is not. Its proportions were incorrect. Um, this also had some form of training with bite work because that bit on the arms. It went for the girl, bit the girl's arm, chased the guy down and did the same thing. Whether that's their training or not, I don't know. But if you're going to have dogs like this, you know, 
you, they don't need to be trained like that. Just just looking at them, they're a beautiful, beautiful breed, and they don't deserve this. I've never met a nasty XL ever in 15 years. Never met one. You've got that little amount of XL bullies, but the rest of them are doing nothing. So why is the XL bully doing it? Because it's not an XL bully. Otherwise, they'd all be doing it. They'd all be attacking. No matter what their size is, they'd all be attacking. But they are, they are overrepresented in dog attack statistics. Um, I think, if I'm being honest with you, that the problem that we've got is you could say that they are represented in the... And yes, they are, OK? But what I'm saying to you is, prove to me that that is an Excel bully. That's what I'm trying to say to you. I'm sorry, but, you know, <laughs> I've been around these dogs a very, very long time, and what I'm seeing on the cameras... They're not XL bullies. Maybe some form of pit's gone into them. Maybe some sort of, you know, I mean, you don't just get a nasty dog because it's a nasty dog. You get nasty dogs because of the way people treat them. You also get nasty dogs down to genetics. And you can put two breeds together and those genetic traits do not work. And then you're asking for trouble. And I think that's what a lot of these people have done. At the end of the day, we've all seen it. Small dogs, little dogs, which turn around and try to bite people. And at the end of the day, the reason why they're not persecuted is because you can just pick up that dog. I can't pick up my bully, but at the same time, my bully is trained. I wouldn't walk around with a dog in which is weaponized in, in parks with kids, with people running around. At the end of the day, I know I could bring my dog here today and have no problems. Same with a lot of people. But the reason why no one's brought it is because at the end of the day, the police are here, they're turning around and trying to persecute us. They're going to use this information to try and put together what a dog is based on if people brought their dogs here today. So everyone left them at home. I think the under... under underlying feeling is people are just really quite scared and worried about losing their pet like regardless of any pet you'd be frightened to lose and i think there's quite a lot of misunderstanding about what the ban would entail we don't actually yet know what the ban would entail because the government is still in the fact finding stage of plans like they haven't said there's no clear plan as of yet about what will happen to the dogs but there's a su suggestion that say the dog is banned You'd have to neuter your dog, you'd have to muzzle your dog when you're taking it out for a walk. It'd have to be kept on a lead and you'd have to register it in some way. And quite a few people are saying that a, va a large proportion of people who own exabilities wouldn't be able to afford to do those things. And then would have to give up the dogs entirely. And then they're concerned that the dogs would be um, put down or just abandoned. And having like an untrained stray XL bully, it would also probably put a lot of pressure on like the RSPCA or like dogs homes and stuff as well that's kind of the argument that they're making and they're also very angry about at the government saying there's so much wrong with this country there's so much like poverty etc why are you concentrating on the dogs well, what has poverty got to do with being a bully dog owner as, as in like you're sh should kids living in poverty not be a bigger priority for the government rather than taking the dogs like concentrating on getting rid of XL bullies. Because there was that woman in the video, right, who said um, there are paedophiles running loose on the streets, but yeah. we're not dealing with that. You could set the bully dogs on them. But it's also a kind of a key argument against that is it is illegal to be a paedophile. <laughs> like, we, we've kind of already sorted that. <laughs> we've kind of, you're, you're not allowed to murder people. You're not allowed to rape people. You're not allowed to, like, you're not allowed to sexually abused children or download child porn those things from a legal perspective have been dealt with that's not on the top of like the legislative agenda but i think maybe but we don't have capital capit capital punishment for those people do we no we don't but so then don't call the, the excellent but, but there isn't a call but there isn't a call for a call no. well apart from emily thornbury is she calling for that no i could just imagine that something she'd like <laughs> <laughs> Emily Thornberry watching this tensing up. <clears throat> no, but let's say they do introduce the ban, mm. and then people do still continue to breed them. Mm. Presumably, those animals are going to be culled. Yeah, because there would be a ban on breeding. Um, yeah, and it'd be illegal to sell them as well. Mm. So it'd be create a, an underground network of XL bullies. Is that not kind of worse than what we have now? I don't know because be, I wonder if people would just be discouraged from buying them because of, of the hassle because they're not but like, then what happens to them if they're already being bred I guess it'd be culled I guess it'd be culled but destroyed but, I think the terminology is destroyed isn't it yeah you call badgers destroy dogs 
I've written down here in the vein of Frank Sinatra, Spirit Dog. Mm -hmm. I've written down Captain Tom, Bully Dog. He loves walks. <laughs> That's really good. It does actually say that on there as well. Yeah, I can I can read it. It's there. There was um, tons of kids at the protest. Um, lots of kids and families holding signs like "Don't bully my best friend." Oh, bro! There was that kid holding the sign of Rishi Sunak as Hitler. That was nuts. That was actually one of the most. No, tell it. Tell them what you said to us. What describe it how you described it to us because that was okay. so funny. What did I say? You got to said it was very tasteful. <laughs> <laughs> Tastefully done. <laughs> is that true? I played that voice note about eight times on oh, really? Saturday. It was making me laugh so much. Um, no, it's not. So it's like that was. So if you haven't seen the sign, it is Rishi Sunak photoshopped onto Hitler's body, and it's a black and white photo, and it says <laughs> Hitler Sunak, <laughs> and then kind of accuses them of like dog racism. I guess it's, it's also, you know the poem that's like I did not come, for, I I was not a Jew, so I did not speak up for the Jews, and then they came for me. It's like that message. But about exile bullies. Shouldn't it be Adolf Sunak? Yeah, it should obviously rather be. Rather than yeah, the syntax of it is all Hitler over the place. Sunak. Yeah. Rishi Hitler. Rishi Hitler. Dare I suggest that some of these people haven't fully thought through the things that they're advocating for? They haven't had yeah, time. They've been so. trying to protect their dogs. Mm, it was from the long arm of the law, yeah. There was also um, a real bent of none of them really trusted the media. So there was, I asked to speak to one guy or um, who's part of a group, I can't remember what the group was called but it was like a key organizer of the protest and he said to me that oh we've we're not doing any media because we feel that our message has been twisted by the mainstream media but what i kind of think about that is they would hope that people were putting a pro xl bully narrative and anything that wasn't pro xl bully they see as the bad narrative and so this i think the feeling was so strong that there was quite a few big guys like I'd, like bodybuilders almost in like official XL bully merch going up to photographers they've got merch oh yeah there's a real like people were like you, I think you can buy Frank, Frank Sinatra at bully merch I'm pretty sure I feel like we should buy some of that <laughs> get dripped out for the next mm. podcast yeah um, I know I want one of those um, no I don't actually I was going to say I want one of those dog leads and I was like no I don't <laughs> 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 no I don't <laughs> but, but they, they were going up to photographers filming them and saying, make sure this is a good narrative. So there is a real sense of media distrust and kind of, I'd say, a bit of intimidation towards other journalists that were there. That's like a, that trend goes beyond the XL bully people, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's an increasing de demonstrations that we've been at together um, or, you know, that Abe has been to where a lot of the time advocates of a cause, particularly if it's one of the more fringe things, you know, I'm. Uh, anti-vax stuff is probably the most obvious one anti-lockdown demos that we went to during covid where if the media tells the, these people or reports things that they don't agree with or that they don't like their immediate reaction is to say you're putting out a false narrative yeah yeah there, there was a, a good example on saturday where one woman i spoke to said like even today once again the media are putting out a false narrative about XL bullies with their bullshit and what happened was there had been like a BBC push, push notification about an XL bully had attacked a man on Friday and police were looking for the owner and that was it was a news article it wasn't like the BBC being like that unwarranted hunt on XL bullies go and bounty on XL bullies head it was like a police report had been put out about yeah, a pretty but it's awful not, attack. It's not good for the cause, is it? Oh no, it's not. But it's, it, but like it's it's they, they treat every. They could have just not printed it. They could have just kept quiet about it. I think there's maybe maybe there's a degree of truth in that though, because until the last couple of months, if an XL bully attacked someone, the BBC wouldn't be sending a push notification about yeah. it. Yeah, no, that's true. It's it, it, in a way because of the increased significance of it, you know, people start, the media starts talking about it, we're now talking about it, we've yeah. made videos about it. It's also, I think, maybe, I actually kind of think they maybe have a point about why are the government doing this now? Are the government doing this now because it's an easy win? Yeah. They've been doing sweet fuck all that's popular for the past year and people are talking about XL bullies. They announced that they're, they've not even done anything yet. XL bullies aren't, aren't banned. They've, they've like, they've announced the intention to do something 
and it's like it's a government win when he when Rishi Sunak put that video out at saying we are announcing a consultation into banning it I saw first my immediate reaction was like why why is this why is this your priority but then I saw someone tweet saying can you imagine a world in which Joe Biden shoots a video and is like we are banning the bully you, you just can't mm -hmm. because you, you, you go whatever Joe Biden is working on it is more important than banning a breed of dog like yeah. if they make a decision someone else is doing that but also I think he's got I don't know, a bigger priority like gun control <laughs> I think yeah. it is like yeah, but, the, but that's true of here as well no, there are bigger is, problems wait the gun is the UK's bully the bully is the UK's gun because I actually really did feel for that woman that you interviewed who said that um, mm. she, the only way she feels safe walking down the street is mm. with her bully no one whistles at her no one cat calls her and I was like do you know what fair point because my good friend has a Rottweiler mm -hmm. and she looks she, Side note, she looks so hot when she's wearing like leather jacket, red lip, Rottweiler, walking down the street. <laughs> but also, she could walk down whatever road she wanted to on whatever street in the UK. No one is touching her, mm. you know? But then, she, but, but then I think she does, con the woman that I spoke to, she does then concede that the dog has been weaponized, which that's, that's going to admit. She's trained it to kill. Yeah, because I'm like, <laughs> you, you being like, well, actually, a man won't attack me because this fucking dog will get you. The, yeah. The main, the main argument of exo owners is they would hurt a fly, they're family pets. And then you're like, no, no, this will kill <laughs> any man that comes near me. Can we just put up a couple of the photos of them when they look really hench? Because I just, what the dogs? That's they're really, units. Yeah. The Frank Sinatra graphics from Instagram. Yeah, they're sick. When the when the shoulders are all like out like that, and they're all like honestly, yeah, they're. That's me as an XL bully, in case you <laughs> cross with a praying mantis. Mind. How long did you study mime for? That was interesting. <laughs> I'll do Keir Starmer again later as an XL bully. <laughs> well, the thing is. <laughs> um, Ed, what was the vibe of the protest? How, well, if you had to describe the emotions of the people there, what, what were they, how were they feeling? I think they were feeling scared. I think a lot of people were like genuinely just, they didn't, so can, a, can child. You a child. I did hear a child. They're not meant to be in here. <laughs> <laughs> You're not meant to be able to hear them. <laughs> that was Ed that snorted just then in case there's any it discrepancy was, it was on the air. <laughs> it was Ava. Um, they were, I think they were just scared about losing their pets. And it was... They're just a bit gutted. I think... I don't know, there's not... A, it's not, the UK is not a fun place to live for a lot of people at the moment in terms of the economy's shit. You might not have a job. You might not. You might feel socially isolated. You might not have a great community you can rely on. But you can rely on your wee pal, the XL bully. And if that's under threat, I do understand the emotions of it. I do feel. I do really feel for the people who are like frightened of losing their dogs. Who are like it's essentially just a family pet because yeah. they're the dogs that they own haven't hurt anybody. But then you've also got the animal advice, excuse me, the animal experts who are like, that's a ticking time bomb yeah. of anything. And it does, and you just hope that the owners that I met are right about their dogs, that, that they are, that you hope that they are exceptionally well-trained and you hope that that dog wouldn't hurt a fly because a lot of people I met are like, oh yeah, no, it's like, a, it's, it's like um, my, my four-year-old's big brother is this dog. And you're like, that's a 60 kilogram dog. That's bigger than that child. That could... Without a hesitation, if it wanted to, that could kill that child. Could kill anybody, and it's you. you just hope they're right. Yeah, I don't know if I'd back myself as a grown adult against no. a sixty kilo ex. No, 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 no. I'm not a grown adult, so. What <laughs> are you? <laughs> well, look, I've, I've raised questions about this before. <laughs> just what are you? <laughs> um, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't stand a chance. No. Uh, there's, there's like so many reasons why I'm like, okay, well, maybe we should let them keep them for you know if they've already got them or whatever. And then I think like. If I had a toddler and I wanted to play with that toddler in the park mm. and there was an XL bully, I'd be shit scared. Yeah. Wouldn't mm. you? Yeah, no, you kind of, you're wary of them when you see them in the street, I think. And they also, they are... I don't think I've ever seen one. Really? Yeah. I've seen them all the time. I'm surprised you haven't seen them because you were in, we won't say where you were, but you were in that area of South East London. I would have thought they would have them there. Yeah. Maybe I don't know what they look like. I haven't seen, I haven't seen anything that looks like Frank Sinatra. No, I think Frank Sinatra is a special dog. And he is. Quit that. 
<laughs> and a very special dog that's going to be like in his highlights all, all over their social in, in, media in his highlights reel of him looking hench like Frank Sinatra is a special dog that, like one of those Ron DeSantis yeah. Ch- <laughs> chat is like <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Ed Campbell boom, boom. Boom. you look like one what that was a really good impression that was actually good I yeah. studied mine coming from it. the mime expert as well it's high praise <laughs> You know, someone um, quote tweeted a bullfight in Spain the other day. It was like, blame the owner, not the breed. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite good. Maybe that's what we should do. Pivot to XL bully fighting and have matadors. Is there any credence? We'd get rid of them that quicker, couldn't we? Then, yeah. <laughs> but then we'd be left. I think they'd win. No, but then we'd be. No, no, I, I thought against each other. No, 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 not dog, dog fighting. Oh, right. No, like man and dog fighting. Because I was going to say, then you'd be left with like the, the morally most acceptable supreme kind, thing. of course. <laughs> oh, beer fit. Give a man and his fists. <laughs> Bare knuckle bully fights. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> get the hardest man in every pub in the UK versus one exo bully. And, and Sean every time. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> the thing is, though, right? Those every so often, there's that poll that will be like, how what percentage of men think they can beat X animal yeah. in a fight? And it will mm. start with hamster, and then it will gradually escalate until it's at about a lion or a gorilla mm-hmm. or an eagle. And there is a flat two percent of men, generally in the Western world, who just believe they could fight any animal yep. and win in combat. So we find that two percent. And we send them into the into the dogfighting pits. Into the pits. Exo-bully marches. Mm. Jordan Peterson versus Bull. <laughs> I am. Um, you don't I'd, watch it. I'd cow out on hamster. I'd go. That thing went kamikaze. I'd have no Even clue what then, to do like, with it. If an actually like really aggressive hamster is try, trying to attack you, what do you do? Because then it was like, do you not just stamp on it? But like, could you bring yourself to? That, yeah. No, I couldn't. Break his neck. No. Break every single fucking bone in its body. If it, it if, if he wants it, <laughs> <laughs> it is on site. You are walking into pet shops. I have tipping over <laughs> displays. <laughs> What's it? You know, like rage rooms. You have that full of just... <laughs> with a bat. Uh-huh. No, um, look, I'm not in the two percent. I'm not in the two percent that think they could fight a silverback gorilla. Like I'm not a moron. Mm-hmm. Fuck the gorilla! Them, those gorillas! Jesus yeah. Christ! Do you know those videos when people are putting their kids next to the glass? Yeah. And the and I'm like, how do you have that much faith in yeah. that glass? The guys, the the conservation people who are you know in Central Africa just sat in the rainforest with them, and then yeah. the silverback like does his che- chest beating yeah, yeah. thing, and yeah, the guys just sat there. But I think it's like prison. Do you know like how I think? You kind of become their bitch. I think it's like that. I imagine. Yeah. So when we're not looking, the gorillas you have to shag are fucking the gorilla. The conservationists. <laughs> <laughs> that is just what's happening. Inside the unspoken truth. <laughs> Conservation's dirty secret. <laughs> this is what the WWF doesn't want you to talk about. <laughs> They're fucking the animals. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was a, that was a powerful one. <laughs> That was really funny. <laughs> but yeah, to reiterate, if a hamster wants this smoke, I will. It will be on site. It's on site. The streets are lock off. It's on site. Yeah. Um, there's also a financial element at play. Yeah. I think people are, if you breed, if you're an exo bully breeder, a backyard breeder, an unlicensed breeder, even a regulated breeder, or if you stud out your, so Frank, if you want um, Frank Sinatra, the bulldog, Excuse me, the XL bully to shag your dog. You can arrange that. He's, you can put, you can get him out to stud. And he knew he, he'd be a big shagger. Just looking at him. <laughs> like, just look, look at him. Yeah. I was like, fucking huge. Um, so there is a financial element for these people, for people as well who are making money off of breeding dogs. And so if your if your job is XL bully breeder and that comes under threat, there's also an interesting point, an argument one woman made, who she was part. Her name's Jane something, and she had. She was one of the first people to introduce American bullies to the UK. She went out to the US and met American bullies and then brought them over to like breed. <laughs> Why are you confused about this? Just, this woman has a lot to answer for. But her argument She's is. like the Sir Walter Raleigh of potatoes. <laughs> yeah. Her, her argument is that uh, the dogs that you see in the attacks aren't XL bullies, which I think is a bit of a cop out. If you just say this dog that or oh, that dog that molds that man to death isn't an XL bully what even is it then? they say it's like a 
staffy pit mix that or something like that they, they say cause there's no because because one of the one of the confusing things about this whole thing is there's no the kennel club in the uk doesn't recognize american american bullies as a breed because it's a relatively recent mix that's been developed so there's no like official definition as of yet and she's suggesting that dogs that are aggressive are just being the owners just say that's an XL bully as like a default because it's not a banned breed as of yet. So you could have, a, um, say, a pit bull. Mm. You could have an actual fully bred pit bull and just say it's an XL bully. So she's suggesting that <laughs> she's, she claimed in 15 years she's never met an aggressive American bully. What so, about before that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But I, I think it's a bit of a cop out just being like, oh yeah, no, XL, all, all the American bullies that I met are lovely, but none of the XL bullies that I haven't met that have attacked people aren't actually XL bullies. Doesn't it annoy you that that, they, that some regulator can't recognise what an XL bully is? Like it comes in and it's just like, I just don't, I don't know <laughs> what that is. Like, but that's, what the hell is that? Yeah. That could actually be the smart thing for them to do, right? Because when Rishi made his announcement, he said, we will define it mm -hmm. and then we will ban it. Yeah. So we don't know what it is. So maybe the way for them to get out of this is to fight him on the defining part of it and find some kind of either insanely specific definition which renders all of their dogs legal mm -hmm. or point it at someone else. Yeah. I don't know. A fucking chihuahua or something. In terms of like nights out though, I'd rather go out with like the XL bully lobby than I would like the pharmaceutical lobby. Like, have you ever hung out with those sort of people? The pharmaceutical like, school of it, not often. Yeah, yeah. So, like, you know, not since the big vets come. They pay us not to mention it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, pe <laughs> the people who are in here with, you know, you know, shilling for that company that rhymes with, you know, Schmeiser. And, <laughs> <laughs> um, and they wear like, you know, they're all suited up, proper little new labour Tory crossover, and they'll say things like, "Oh, have you looked at the stock market recently?" And you know probably date rape you compared to <laughs> the XL <laughs> bully lot I reckon you'd quite enjoy a pint with them they did look like a good time I would say that yeah they were fun if they weren't if they wanted to speak to you which a lot of them didn't uh, it was quite hostile that's interesting because uh, most protests right yeah people are if you're protesting for a cause people... it's really easy to get people to speak to you mm. but they're because of the distrust of the media they like, claimed they'd been stitched up on Good Morning Britain. <laughs> Good thing you didn't stitch them up on here then. <laughs> I didn't. No, you didn't. Uh, did you say I did there? No, but no, I said no, you didn't. But then I was going to say, we have actually been laughing about Excel bullies <laughs> for about half an hour. No, we don't, I, but we're not calling for a ban. I think I did last week. Yeah. <laughs> I think I have done to... on this podcast. <laughs> um, is there a class element? Of course, yes. we're in Britain, of course there is. But yeah, just... so, they, so one guy I spoke to called Ricky who I think was in his early 20s he was he said how many pe people here do you reckon live in council houses and I was like couldn't say and he said I reckon 80% and he was saying he was kind of making the point that this dog is probably disproportionately owned by people um, from a working class background who live on council estates and they all seem to be quite concerned that if you they were saying that if you live in a council house and you own a dog under the dangerous dog that's banned under the dangerous dogs act you're not allowed to keep it in your council house so th that's what they're really scared of is they, that dog will be automatically removed they won't be able to go through even go through the process of registering their dog mu muzzling it on a walk it oh, that's quite sad it was i like and so it, this is something that does disproportionately affect working class people or people who live on council estates but then also you could say that people who live beside these dogs do should have the freedom to not be mauled by them. Mm. There is like, it, I, I think for every, there is like, that is ultimately the argument is, should these, th there has been a disproportionate amount of dogs. I think they were, they've been, XL bullies have seemingly been responsible for something like 70% of dog attacks since 2020. And they, there's not, they're massively overrepresented in dog attack statistics. And the, the, the people with the family of like the wee girl who's been killed, like the wee boy who's been killed, they would probably think, they would have hoped that a ban would have been put in sooner. That's what I think the, you kind of need to remember in all this is people's like safety mm. that is being discussed. It's not just about having a family pet, it's about like 
the freedom to not be to not lose your arm when you're out for a walk but then you could make the argument that that can happen i mean like you know you could walk out there and be hit by a bus and say well i've got the freedom to walk on the road and not be hit but mm. So with every right, there's a responsibility, isn't there? You I know? suppose a bus doesn't chase people. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in the bus's instinct <laughs> to hit you. <laughs> maybe the drivers, but is it? But it's the owners. Maybe the the ultimate <laughs> is ultimately the responsibility of the owner. The bus itself isn't dangerous, but the driver. Yeah, as someone who what the hell? What the hell is going on out there today? Um. As someone who recently survived a dog attack, yep. I can say um, that you're right. You should be free to not to not be subject to that. Mm-hmm. But also think how different it would have been if that had been an exo bully that attacked you. Look, it was pretty mortifying. It was a fucking miniature <laughs> dash So, <laughs> but that's, I think I think that's also a point. Like people, I still have to go to hospital. Yeah, no, obviously, you, you you a fucking dog bite. Tetanus jab. Because proponents of the ban make the point that exo bullies, because they are enormous and strong, you can't just lift, like you're putting yourself in danger if you physically try to intervene in an exo bully attack mm. versus if like a dashing, you can pick that up. Well, what if you had some kind of like tranquilizer situation? Do you know like what they do with, you know, like one of oh, those little- Oh yeah, now we're talking. You know, like, like a, a blow little- dart. And the answer, could... everyone gets a blow gun. <laughs> yeah. That's... I can see no issue with that. <laughs> <laughs> But this is the, this is the thing, what right? What if you gave one an EpiPen? Do you think it would make it strong? <laughs> an, an EpiPen is adrenaline. Yeah, no, <laughs> it gets up on its hind legs. It can walk now. It's like cocaine bear or something. <laughs> um, interestingly, I know we've been, we've been laughing about this <laughs> as we do about most things, but um, there was actually I thought a very sincere and good faith comment on the subreddit from an XL bully owner. About, yeah. about 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 this issue. Yeah, they, they were um, they posted that they're in favour of a ban. They were saying that they recognise the responsibilities that they have of, as an exo bully owner to make sure that their dog is exceptionally well trained, and which I, th- I think that's I think it's maybe the, it's it's the same way people who own guns in America talk about it. Say you need to re- understand the responsibilities that you have as a gun owner. It can't be taken on lightly. This mm-hmm. is a very dangerous thing, and you need to handle it. With some level of responsibility um what did you make of the comment well yeah i guess the thing is other uniquely dangerous things in this country like firearms like cars you can't just go and fucking buy one at tesco no you have a license mm-hmm. you are assessed by the government mm-hmm. either the dvsa in the case of um a car or the police in terms of if you wanted to get a shotgun and I think it also makes sense that if you want to get a dog that can rip your arm off, perhaps there should be a degree of regulation there. I don't know if a ban is the answer. I wonder whether it's you get a license. If you want to have one, you can have a get a license. You know. Um, but then I, I think the issue is that they're all making that people are making is there's lots of ba- backyard breeders that are like if that's conti- if there isn't a ban, they would still be largely able to get a get away get away with backyard breeding um, without penalty and that's where the danger is right yeah because then if you're creating a specific if you mix introducing other breeds more more aggressive breeds to the mix then there they can, you can continue to do that whereas if there is a penalty for breeding and selling dogs then i think that would bring that to an end perhaps <laughs> you can only get an xl bully from crofts <laughs> yeah, be... yeah 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 uh, mm. do you think an xl bully could win crofts in the strongman section? I don't... <laughs> what do you bench, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Not as much as that fucking dog. Um, Imagine it going through all the little tunnels and hoops and shit that it's got to do. It must struggle. You could intimidate the judges into <laughs> awarding <laughs> yeah. you the victory. Yep. There was a girl um, getting really upset about it on Instagram over the weekend because apparently like, the anti-dog lo- lobby has tried to do it to her dog as well. And she's got a pug. <laughs> 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 oh, they, just, they just make the point that the, that the pug can't breathe properly <laughs> they're yeah. like no <laughs> they can't breathe babe it's very different yeah. from like like if I came into co- I tell you what that's my level I reckon I could take a pug yeah you just like go up some stairs and it'd be like <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how slow I get up the stairs <laughs> <laughs> I'll leisurely walk 
Shall we move on? Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the Metropolitan Police then. Um, soldiers. <laughs> Speaking of bullies. <laughs> oh, oh, very good. You should do it. You should do the segue, my guy. Fuck. Um, soldiers and armed officers from other forces are on standby to support the Met Police after dozens of Metropolitan Police officers stood down from firearms duties over the weekend after a fellow officer was charged with the murder of Chris Carper, Sky News reports. The officer has been granted anonymity by a district judge. Met, Con- Met Commissioner Mark Rowley welcomed a review into the situation by Home Secretary Suella Braverman to ensure armed off- officers have, quote, the confidence to do their job. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak is backing the review, said armed officers need clarity about their legal powers. Chris Carber was shot and killed by a Met officer while driving in September last year in Streatham Hill, South London. It later emerged... Yeah, that's... No. It later emerged that the car Carper was driving, which did not belong to him, had been linked by police to a gun incident the day before. Um, I just want to also add, though, that the the Met have now told the MOD that they can stand down. They're all right. Very good. Um, so they don't need soldiers. They've, they've got enough. Enough of the guys have returned to duty as of this afternoon. Um, obviously, none of us can comment on uh, the legal matters that are arising out of this because of the well-established traditions about court proceedings in this country. What we can talk about, though, is that several hundred Met Police officers um, felt that because they had been held to the same standard as the rest of the country, uh, i.e. you can't murder people, if, um, or you can't be you can't be accused of murdering someone. Uh, they were just simply going to stop doing their jobs because because their boy their boy was was in the dock, and um, I just thought that was pretty fucking disgusting. Well, let's talk about this completely away from all of this, and let's talk about um, child Q, or let's talk about the tasered young girl in South mm. London, or let's talk about Wayne Cousins. When you think about those three instances. Do you automatically go, do you know, all police officers should, should have impunity with their, <laughs> with their guns? They should be able to do whatever they want. Yeah. This is the thing for me, isn't it? You know, uh, we, they're basically saying we don't feel like we have the backing. We don't feel, we don't feel that you're going to back us up when we pull the trigger. Um, and does the argument not go that they are highly trained, well trained to do this job? We don't just hand out MP5s to any fucker who wants one yeah but you know Wayne Cousins did have one he was on the parliamentary estate that's true and there was that other the bloke who oh, got, yeah. got done for multiple rapes as well he yeah. was he also had a gun didn't he sorry not to rain on your parade I think that you made a fair point there that we don't just hand out guns to anyone and then you go oh cr- shit we do uh, yeah actually, <laughs> actually we kind of are giving the yeah. wrong guns um, but you know their their reasoning goes we, we don't have you're not backing us we're high, high, you know, split second decisions, highly tense, yada yada yada. But no one's asking you to do it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And if you get it wrong, not saying that is what's happened here, but that's what the Crown Prosecution Service clearly feels there's enough evidence to take forward a murder charge against the officer. How? Away from it. Yeah. Um, they should. The, the fact that they're standing down, it's kind of like their kids throwing out their toys at the pram. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it's pretty unbecoming. It's, it seems to be, if you are a member of the police, or the Metropolitan Police, or an armed police officer, you should be willing to take on the responsibility that comes with that. You have, you're going to be in the most high pressure situations, probably, that being a police officer can entail, and you should embrace the responsibility, and you should embrace the extra level of scrutiny that comes with that you should you should make sure you should want to do your job to the highest standard possible and if and if you can't handle that then you probably shouldn't be an armed policeman yeah you'd want to think that you're employing people with such excellent judgment that they know when to pull a trigger and when not to pull a trigger like the mark duggan thing Mm. yep arguably I don't think that person should have, have had a gun. No. Because he got into a high pressure situation, panicked and pulled the trigger and took someone's life away mm-hmm. from them. I just don't think that if you're not, you've got to be some special kind of human. For example, I would not enroll myself <laughs> in this. <laughs> I'd go, do you know what, gang? Not for me. Drop a comment if you think Ava should be given a gun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just on the podcast, just to see what happens. Yeah. Just a loaded gun in the middle of, <laughs> of the table. 
Yeah. <coughs> I'd hand mine in straight away. I'd be like, do you know what, guys? There's got to be someone better. Have you tried Wayne? <laughs> 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 He's free. Um, Ava, you made a good point earlier about uh, Northern Ireland in connection to this. Yeah, I had to get that one signed off by Sean. I got scared to say that earlier, but now I feel emboldened. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, earlier this year and last year, Johnny Mercer, Veterans Minister, was very concerned because there was uh, some historical proceedings against some members of the British Army for how they acted in Northern Ireland. And, you know, there was some, some chat about how they might have gone in there and gone way above and beyond what they should have been doing while over there to police the situation. Um, and some people were killed. And there was questions over whether those army members should now be tried in court um, over whether they used due force or whether they went above and beyond. I believe that's now been quashed. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're going to do that. Yeah. There's going to be protections for veterans. But along that same side, I mean, I think that, yeah, those if you went over there and you were acting with impunity in Northern Ireland, you should be tried for that. In the same way that if you get given a gun by the Met you and go overboard, you should be tried. That's mm. it, isn't it? Is it? Do we say, because you were operating for the British state, um, you're allowed to commit war crimes? You know, or we're yeah. saying that there's an expiry date on war crimes, that we will accept the shooting of unarmed civilians because you're just old now. Yeah. We'll, we'll, let, we'll let you get away with well, it. If, if they were tried at the time, you wouldn't have an old man shuffling into court on his with his walking stick and create and people feel sorry for that old man mm. but whereas if you see like a young guy who has shot a child in the back that's a much clearer case isn't it well it's like in afghanistan my cousin did four terms in afghanistan and it's like you know how to you you know when to shoot and when not to yeah. shoot it's quite a clear distinction I can't say anything else he would say, but it does. <laughs> but it does lend itself to that point. <laughs> but I think it's another thing about just like the responsibility you're you're being entrusted with, the the inherit the violence of the state. You're you're being trusted with the state's monopoly on violence, and you should, if you're being entrusted with that, you should be happy to bear the responsibility and the scrutiny of it. You shouldn't you shouldn't balk at any level of scrutiny at all. It's, it's like when I'm. It's maybe a bit different, but you know when politicians conflate criticism with abuse, mm. when they say like, "Oh, I've been abused on Twitter," and it's actually just like, "No, you've been you've been criticised for your actions." You you should as a as a member of as a member of parliament, you should be happy to be scrutinised for your actions because they're important. Mm -hmm. What you do is important, and you you shouldn't just no one in any kind of public life or office or being entrusted with any instrument of state power should shy away from any level of scrutiny. Yeah, if you are a doctor that has killed a patient because oh, yeah. you administered <laughs> way too much, I don't know, Morphine. insulin a bit too close to the, uh, <laughs> close to something that re happened recently, but if you are that doctor, then yeah, obviously the family's gonna go, you need to be held to account. Just because you're a doctor and you're, you're allowed to administer med medicine, it doesn't mean mm. that you get to administer whatever medicine <laughs> you like. <laughs> I think Harold Shipman would disagree, yeah. actually. Yeah, don't speak his name. <laughs> Take his name out your mouth. I guess the thing to say as well is, you know, surely the police should be fucking gassed about this. Like, they literally live for arresting people. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, this, is, this is what they do. Good day at work. Yeah, no, like, you know, oh, murder charge. Buzzing, you know? Why do you keep bringing it back there? I keep like, I keep going. Let's scoot right out of there. Let's keep going, and you're like, do you know Let's what? Let's get though? Him, boys. Because you know, okay, to, to talk to, to talk in the abstract, then you know, um, mm, let's say the police made us talk in the abstract. <laughs> let's say, <laughs> yeah, let's on the say, Patreon, we'll have a. Let's say, <laughs> yeah, just like just contempt of court. We'll just collapse a trial Patreon on the Patreon. Patreon protects you from you all know, court proceedings. If if the <laughs> If the police were to successfully bring, you know, arrest someone and then the CPS decide to bring a murder charge against someone, I don't know, in a gang, let's say, who heard they suspected of stabbing someone, they would celebrate that fact. They, they, would, they would be pleased. They'd be like, yes, this is the intended outcome. This is justice. This is law enforcement in action. We've heard of KPIs. They would scream in celebration. <laughs> yes, and also, Ollie, in that case, they would have arrested a black person. So that's why they would have been <laughs> so pleased. You are, you are, yes, you are reading between the lines of, um, of, what, of what I'm saying. Yeah, which well, is... I thought it really needed to be said. <laughs> <you know. laughs> that 
I think it, it's quite telling the way the police officers reacted is they do view policing as a zero sum game. Mm -hmm. They they mm -hmm. view it as the police versus the public, or as Ava rightly points out in London anyway, the police versus black people. And for what's happened to have happened, they're basically saying like, no, 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 no. That's not what we signed up for. Yeah. Revealing. Let's not go too deep into it, but it is interesting how every single time or most times something really abhorrent comes about with the Met Police. It's like, oh God, and they've done it. They've done it to another black person. <sighs> how does this keep, this keep happening? Yeah. It must just be such an accident. <laughs> It's, in, it's actually insane. Yeah, they're, they're the unluckiest police force in Britain. Unluckiest police force. How mad is it that that whole report came out last year that was like, this group of people is like the most racist group of people, <laughs> sexist, I've ever known. You need to do something about this. And everyone was like, oh, yeah, well, it's all that, right. That in, that, keep giving them guns. I'm obviously the Casey Report expert. You are. You are the resident <laughs> Casey Report expert. Because I'm the only one <laughs> who watched that proceeding. That's the late committee with Baroness Casey talking about the report. It was like, there were some quite funny bits where the minister, the um, one of the members of the committee said to Baroness Casey, well, it's just, well, one bad apple can't affect the whole metropolitan police. And Baroness Casey was like, no, 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 thousands of bad apples. <laughs> <laughs> bad barrel of apples. <laughs> <laughs> you put a good apple in there that turns into a terrible apple. <laughs> And the apple becomes racist, <laughs> homophobic, <laughs> sexist, not just to people who aren't apples, but to apples as well. <laughs> the apple's they, got its core out. Yeah, yeah. They are wormy apples. <laughs> <laughs> they should have put you in charge of comms for the report. You would have yeah, smashed that. Uh, <laughs> just me, there me are, holding um, an Excel bully, <laughs> penned up to the gills. <laughs> in Sam Smith's outfits. <laughs> <laughs> Get people talking, for yeah. sure. Um, there's like 800 of them that are under investigation for sexual harassment and domestic abuse. Jesus Christ. I was saying... I was, that's too many. I'm going to go on record and say that's too many. How would you two like to respond? <laughs> 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 this is the only podcast that's willing to say that's too many. <laughs> for me, it depends how many apples there are. <laughs> What's the proportion? Yeah, very important. Can Great we get, question, Amy. Should we get like Strongbow on the phone and should we ask them, how many apples need to be bad in your barrel before you go, no cider from these. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the mate should take, should take uh, lessons from breweries. Yeah. <laughs> and, and cider companies. Yeah. If Thatchers look at it and they go, not Gross. good. Ugh. Yeah. Yucky Bad cider. <laughs> <laughs> then we A cab. Because <laughs> it's, um, it's, 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 it's nearly 1900 deaths in police custody or after contact with the police. According to inquest, one thousand eight hundred and seventy-one. Mm. And this is the first charge pertaining from that, right? Mm. I mean, those. No, are no, no, no. One was one went to prosecution. I mean, those are still stag staggeringly low, aren't they? Anyway, I'd like to also just you know point out that Ollie has once again brought it back. To <laughs> <laughs> okay, shall we have an Edwina Curry John Major fact? Okay, so actually, I don't want this to be like a fact segment. I want no. this to just be like... A discussion. I just, no, I just tell you, I just tell you a little morsel, okay? So I just tell you something. So this about, isn't a fact. I just tell you something about either Edwina Please and John Major. And it's about the affair in some capacity. Okay, okay. So that's the segment going forward. But it, but it is true. So, yeah, 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 something yeah, okay. happened. Okay, so, cool. so, so the next time we'll just be like, and what's going... Anyway, okay, so... Do you want me to set it up? Do, do we want to set it up? Do we need to? I think it's better if it's just mysterious. Okay, let's go. Should we just say, okay, Edwina Curry and John Major had an affair for four years when they were in Thatcher's government, and it's a source of immense fascination for Ed Campbell. And <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> anyway. I literally don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but please continue. Yeah. Okay, so now this is my apropos of nothing, yeah. Edwina Curry tweet from 2022. She tweeted, hospital, full stop, possible Broken hip, and I may have been wait. Oh, I may have been walking around on it for ten days. Mm. Ceiling looks like a historic liaison is coming back to bite me. <laughs> John Major, such a dog. <laughs> Would we call him an XL bully? Oh, he's an XL bully in the sheets. <laughs> what's, it, what's it like a the most placid dog? We like retriever on the streets. XL bully in the sheets. 
No, 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 no. Because now you're cre- now I'm going to have to defend John Major and creep into something I actually was going to say for Wednesday. I was calling him good in bed. <laughs> you ready? You ready? Yeah. This is Edwina once said this about John Major. Oh, John Major was a sexy beast. I think his history shows that. He was 19 when he was living with a woman who was 33. <laughs> Believe me, I did not have to teach that man anything. He was experienced and fun. <laughs> I don't think it's appropriate for this is after the salmonella crisis. That's, well, that's good to keep it in time. In light of our conversation last week <laughs> yeah, is that about the age of consent, is it okay for a 19-year-old to be having sex with a 33-year-old? Depends if the egg's good. What did you say? Are the eggs good? Are the apples bad? <laughs> Who are the apples in that circumstance? It's John Major's apples and her eggs. Jesus. Hey, you can't call them that. <laughs> Edwina, Edwina Curry's eggs have got salmonella. Do you know what I'm talking about? The salmonella crisis? No. No. Oh, do you not? No. Well, you just let me talk about eggs recurrently I'm for sure, ages. I'm sure it's like one person who's listening would understand. She, she, um... She, she told everyone not to eat eggs in the egg lobby. It was like, what the hell? <laughs> like... Um, there was so there was like this faux salmonella outbreak. Okay. How, how do you know? Okay, we'll do that. That that could be next. Episode. That'll be next episode. And that'll be <laughs> your Patreon tier. If you yeah. do, if you give Ava a tenner, she'll give you four hours of <laughs> salmonella. She'll give you four of her eggs. <laughs> <laughs> that was vile. <laughs> how many ten pound donations would it take from the Patreon? for you to go to one of those fish sauna jacuzzi things. Oh, yeah. Where they do the, you know, where you put your foot in the thing yeah. and the little guppy fish. Like. No, did you not read about the girl who got her toe eaten off? Or had to have Happy her toe removed the and then her whole leg removed? The number's just gone up. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, nothing massive, like 50K. 10 grand cash right here, right now. Oh, yeah, obviously I'd do that. So it's not 50k, is it? No, I was joking. Yeah, so you're not that scared I'm, dri- of fish, I'm, driving, hard- <laughs> <laughs> I'm driving a hard bargain. You know as, as you said to Ava earlier, good joke. Yes, thank you. I was, do you know what I noticed about my fish phobia the other day? It's I was, not I was real? in a pub that there was a. <laughs> 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 I'm doing it for attention. Um, the, there was a, a fish tank behind the bar of a pub I was in the other day with like some freaky looking fish. And I couldn't physically bring myself to look at it. And I, and I wondered, I was like, I wonder if I could look at it. I was like, no, <laughs> I can't. So, someone on the subreddit said it's called ich- ichthyophobia yeah, or something. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Do you have any good fact? <laughs> <laughs> We're just doing facts. Yeah. Um, okay, five grand in cash. What time of the month is it? How close to payday are we? <laughs> Last week of the month. <laughs> yeah, I'd obviously do it for. Yeah. I'd do it for. Because. A fibre. You could you know, take your girlfriend out for a nice meal, some caviar, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> Do you know what these turn into? <laughs> <laughs> she she chooses one of those restaurants that you have to pick your own lobster. Oh god! Because <laughs> um, there's twelve hundred people in the subreddit, right? Yeah. So if half of them put a tenner in, I'm going to put my, my that pay- is enough. I'm going to put my PayPal in <laughs> on the subreddit. No, I no, it's not PayPal. Happens. It has to be crowd. It has to be a crowdfund. It has to have a target because if it's a PayPal, you just get the tenors, and if they don't get five grand, you still have all the tenors. Well, yeah, it has to be a crowd. <laughs> no, 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 it has to be a crowdfunder. It has to be a crowdfunder, and then if it gets to the five k target, it then drops in your account, and we fucking go to a fish. And we spot. drop you in a tank. So I'd get five grand. You would get five grand from the audience, and we would film to placate them. We would film you. Oh, wait, oh, at yeah. the fish spa. Yes, obviously I would do that. Okay, great. You would do it for five grand. Yes. Audience, you know what to do. Ah, oh, so f- should we actually there? do it? Should we try? Pledge should how much see? money you'd give me on the subreddit. Then I don't think that you should actually take the money. I think that you should then donate the money. No, to I, Ava. <laughs> <laughs> I fully disagree. I would buy an XL bully. <laughs> Is that how much they cost? No, I don't know. You get a good one. Frank Sinatra. <laughs> You'd get the prime XL. That's also that's a real like. I actually can tell you a story about. <laughs> I, say that again. I can tell you a story about an XL bully. Why did you not do that earlier? We were talking about. Well, because I didn't want to do it, and then I thought, actually, fuck it. Okay. I love oversharing. Um, someone in my close proximity of relations um, once had an XL bully. It got nicked, oh. and um, I'm not joking when I say this. Two years later, he's walking down the street, and this dog like breaks away from the guy who's walking in it and like leaps onto him. I nearly I nearly said who it was. <laughs> um and it was him. Oh. It was his dog. 
and he gave him there and there five grand to get the dog back yeah the dog got nicked out the van yeah that's good people could be on here being like why was the dog in the van i'm sure the window was cracked all right (laughs) it was he was trying to kill the dog yeah (laughs) (laughs) the windows were rolled up i just say if that dog wanted to get out that van because it was too hot that dog's getting out that van (laughs) bang bang Hmm. are we done about the extra bullies in the net I think so is Mm. that it I think that's us yeah we done Mm -hmm. live podcast in Liverpool Uh, tickets at the World Transform website Ava anything else you'd like to say about that Mick Lynch is going to be there you'll be there I'll be there that's the main. <laughs> that's the main thing. That's all the. And Ben stands. Smoke, Ben Smoke, friend and of the Ben podcast. Smoke, friend of the one podcast. of the best podcasts that ever was made. I'm constantly reminded, and I wasn't here, so. I'm sure that's got nothing to do with it. Yeah, that was like the second episode. Yeah. Wow. I don't know where I was. I think you're on holiday. Well, that would be me, wouldn't it? Yeah, never bloody here. Okay, and get on the subreddit as well. Yeah, R slash Politics Joe, get involved. And we might mention your post on the podcast. We may, and if you want to put a tenor towards a crush, should we say that? Should we? Do, should we actually do it? Should we see? I don't want to commit to that yet. I want to. I want to see how many much people will pledge. There's a lot I would. I do also for five po- I'm just going to post my PayPal and see what happens. No, don't. No. Do that. <laughs> Obviously, you can't do that. Obviously, you can't do that. We both put our PayPal and then race. No. 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 You cannot do, do you that. Think, I think people would pay a lot of money to watch my feet get eaten by fish. <laughs> Cut it. <laughs> but it's actually, that's what you think it is, but it's actually just my feet. <laughs> or we pretend you've done it and it's my feet. And they're like, oh, so elegant. <laughs> Didn't realise they had women's feet. <laughs> they're like red toenails. Oh. Thank you very much for listening to the <laughs> Joe podcast. I'll see you on the next one.